have on our bench racing hotline a young man who was able to uh, get his first NASCAR win this past weekend at Bristol in the k and East Series. Nelson Piquet Jr. joins us. Hi, Nelson. How are you? I'm very good. And you? Hey, I'm doing terrific. Uh, what did you think about Bristol? Obviously, uh, you must have had a good time. Whenever you run up front, you have to have a good time. Well, I mean, it's, it's kind of good when you're quickest in practice, when you do pole position and uh, you lead most of the race and you win the race at the end. So uh, it is. it was a great weekend. I mean, we... Uh, I think it worked very well together. Me and my crew chief, uh, we did a good job together. We I adapted myself well to the car, and uh, we kind of figured everything out very quickly. So uh, no, it was it was a great feeling to be able to to be in victory lane for my first time here in America. Well, there's a lot of people that talk about racing at Bristol and how difficult it is to see because of the banking. Did you find that to be a real problem when you started running at Bristol for the first time, just actually trying to figure out how far ahead you can see? No, not really. I mean, uh, I found it quite, I mean, Bristol has suited me quite well. I mean, it's a quick track, a lot of banking. Uh, you don't use too much, much brakes. So, I don't know. It's I kind of a track that, that I really, that I really got, got, got suited well with me, and uh, I kind of like it a lot now. <laughs> Yeah, well, whenever you get a win there, that kind of uh, makes your, you like a place a lot quicker. Let's talk about the truck series as well, seeing as uh, you're going to be in that uh, number 30 Qualcomm for uh, Turner Motorsports as well. Th having this long layoff from Daytona before you race at Martinsville again, I, I can see why you would want to get in a car and run in that K&NE series. Does it kind of drive you crazy that you haven't been be been able to be in the truck for a while? Well, yeah, I mean, the calendar doesn't help much. I mean, I know that uh, they lost two or three races this year compared to last year, which is uh, not too good. So I'm trying to, um, yeah, I'm trying to uh, re-put this, this seat time, lost, lost seat time in, in, in the can uh, We tested for three days in short track uh, just, you know, to get more seat time. Uh, we, I'm, I'm doing a little ball race this, this weekend at Kingsport. So, uh, yeah, I'm just trying to run as much as I can and just be ready for Martinsville also, which is a very difficult track, as you know. Well, yeah, both Martinsville and Bristol, most people would say, are difficult tracks. And obviously you had success in the Formula One ranks running only on, on road courses. Is it difficult for you still at, at this point? I mean, you've been away from Formula One long enough, though. I, I guess it may not be, but... It, is it been a heck of a transition trying to run on these short bull ring type racetracks? Yeah, I mean the shorter ones are much more difficult. I think the mile and a half tracks are, I don't know, I, I felt much more comfortable on them, and I, I got it straight away. Well, I didn't get it straight away, but I mean it was I picked it up much easier. Um, but the tracks like Martinsville, uh, Darlington, uh, there's many tracks which uh, which I think are gonna take me a while to, to, to do well on that thing, uh, especially going up the series, driving with even more competitive drivers, it's going to get harder and harder for me. So for sure, I'm going to I'm gonna try to spend as much time as I can, you know, on my off seasons and stuff like that uh, on short tracks to just to recover this lost time, you know, that I had uh, that all, all of these other drivers did since they were small. I'm going to try to recover it as quick as I can. Have you had some time to be able to practice in your truck in between Daytona and, and as you go to Martinsville? Have you had any chance to get someplace and do yeah, some testing? Yeah. Uh, I said it a bit earlier. We, we tested for three days. Actually, today we tested a whole a full day at Motor Mile again. So uh, we, we, we have been testing quite a fair amount just to just to be on the safe side and make sure that we're going to be we okay in Martinsville. Uh, last year, racing with Kevin. They, they didn't really like that thing too much, so it was a bit difficult for me and being my first year. But uh, this year, I think uh, I think Turner, Turner has been helping me a lot and, and they have been on our side trying to help us on our a weak point. We're talking with Nelson P.K. Jr. And uh, did you stay up and watch uh, the race from the uh, Formula One race from Australia? Yeah, I saw, I saw parts of it. Uh, I had, well, the whole team came back to my place after the race, and uh, we kind of hanged out there at my place. Uh, and after that, so yeah, I, I saw part of it, part of 
some of them I, I didn't I don't remember, but uh, uh, most of it I saw it. Yeah, I, I thought it was a. It's always Australia is always one of those hectic races, which you know nobody kind of knows on which uh, level you are and and how quick you're gonna be and who you're gonna compete with. So uh, it's always kind of a mystery, but uh, it was a fun race. That track to me looks terribly narrow for for F1 cars. Is is, it, is that the way it is? Uh, it's one of the toughest tracks out yeah. there. I mean, that one together with Montreal, I think, are 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 really difficult. Because at the same time that you have a little bit of, of gravel trap and a little bit of space, it is a very very quick track. Um, I mean, you know, even Monaco, which people can imagine, which is more difficult because it has walls all around it and there's no way to escape it due to a mistake. It is kind of easier. I mean, I, I, I had a better time in Monaco than I had a, than I had in Montreal. Oh, <laughs> really? sorry. And, and what did you think of the cars? There's been an awful lot of talk about people saying they're just butt ugly. Do you, <laughs> uh, do you agree with that, or is this just uh, the next uh, incarnation of that, can- of that car? Well, I mean, it's regulations, you know. I mean, they always change it, uh, and then people have to follow kind of the rules, you know. I mean, it, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's not it's not the designer's fault. It's who, who does the regulations, and the designers have to, have to kind of try to go around it to, to make the car as quick as they can. So, I mean, it's not the first time we see these kind of things. I mean, uh, we have seen ugly cars before. We kind of get used to it after, uh, after some time. And uh, we tend to forget it, but I mean, uh, it's one of those things. I'm sure in about one year, two years, we're completely going to forget about it, and we're going to think it's normal. Yeah, I guess it's one of those things. Uh, whatever new is is kind of different for you, and you kind of make judgments exactly. on it. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a beautiful car if you're winning in it, right? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, and, I and say it's a beautiful car if you're winning in it. Oh yeah, for sure. Well, and the one that won is a beautiful car. Um, it, 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 it didn't. It didn't have that this Lego version in the front of it. So uh, yeah, I think congratulations to McLaren. They managed to do a beautiful car and, and very quick. Yep. Well, Nelson, uh, again, congratulations on your win this past weekend at uh, Bristol. Hope you get uh, many, many more in the truck series. We'll be watching you all season long. Thanks for being with us. We appreciate it. Uh, thank you, and you guys call me. Call me any time, and uh, hopefully I'll be speaking next time you win in the truck series. So. All right. We'll you be looking it. forward we'll, to we'll it. We'll be calling you. Thanks, Nelson. Right. Have a great one. Thanks. Bye-bye. Right. Bye now. Nelson P.K. Jr.